it is frequently advantageous to put data into index number form. It is advantageous because it makes the data relatively easier to interpret and to visualize. When we put data into index number form, what we customarily do is choose a value of 100 for the data series in some particular time period or in some particular location. Then what we do is we look at the values of the variable that we're interested in in other time periods relative to the base value which we have set at 100. So technically the way we compute a price index is given here in the third bullet. We take the base year value and put it into the denominator. If we are interested in an index number for a particular year t, we take the, the value of the variable in that year t, divide it by the value of the variable in the base year, and multiply the result by 100, and that will give us an index number for the variable in question with a base equal to 100. A nice feature about index numbers is that they do not depend upon units of measure. So index numbers can describe data that come in dollar form, or they can describe data that come in other numeric quantity form, for example. And interpretation is very easy because we interpret the value of the index relative to some base year or to some base value. Let's have a look at how we do this. So here is an expanded form of the same data that we had a few moments ago. These are the prices of houses in Vancouver in particular time periods. You will recognize the data from 2006 onwards as the data that we had in the table earlier on. We have added a couple of earlier values here for 1999 and 2000. So what we're going to do here is we're going to construct a house price index, which is going to be given over in the final column here. And we will choose 1999 as the base year. So we can use the data in these first two columns to construct the values that we have in the third column. What does the value of 183.3 in the third column represent for the year 2009? It tells us that relative to this base year, where the value is 100, that the price has increased between 1999 and 2009 from 100 to 183.3, which is to say a percentage increase of 83.3%. So here you can see the value of an index number. If we set the base value equal to 100, we can immediately see how the variable in question has trended or has evolved relative to the base time period, and we can immediately see what the percentage change in the variable has been because the base, by definition, is set equal to 100, which is what enters into a percentage per 100. By the same reasoning, in 2012, prices had gone from $330,000 in 1999 up to $870,000 at the end of the time period. Relative to the price in 1999, the $870,000 price in 2012 represents a value of 263.3 relative to a value of 100 for 1999. In this instance, we can immediately say that the value has increased by 163.3% because it has gone from 100 to 263.3, which is a change of 163.3 relative to 100. So how did we get these numbers in the final column? Well, all we really did was we divided each of the values in the middle column by the base year value and multiplied the results by 100. So here's what we did. We arbitrarily selected 1999 as the base year. We didn't have to choose the first year as the base year. We can choose any year we wish as the base year. We simply choose 
chose 1999 because we decided at the start that it was a nice comparison year. We could have set the value of the index equal to 100 for any other year in the time series and computed the price index relative to that. So, for example, we could have started with a base of 2012, and then we could have computed an index number for every year going back to 1999, and we then would have had an index number series which would have given us the relative price of housing in each of the earlier years relative to 2012. And, of course, if in general prices were lower in the years prior to 2012, the index number values would, by and large, be lower than 100, if 100 is the value that we attribute to the price of housing in 2012. So here is a formal statement of how we construct the price index. We are going to take the value in any year, t, and put that in the numerator, and we will take the value of the house price in the base year and put that in the denominator and multiply the result by 100. So in the base year, 1999, we are going to divide the price of housing in year T by its value in the base year, which enters into the denominator. And this is the procedure we will use for each time period. So the base year value of what is 100. Let's take the year 2008. We are dealing with the first quarter values in every case. How would we construct a price index value for the year 2008, given that we have 1999 as the base year? Well, we simply take the value in 2008, divide it by the value in the base year, multiply the result by 100, and we get a value of 215.15. So that tells us that if the price index is set at 100 in 1999, by the year 2008, prices have gone up by 115.15%. We could do the same thing in any other time period. For example, in 2012, the average price was $870,000. So again, plugging this into our formula, we take the value in the year in question, put it in the numerator, take the value of the base year, put it in the denominator, divide one into the other, multiply the result by 100, and the answer we get in this instance is 263.33. So this is how we obtained all of the values for the price index in the final column of our table. And you can see immediately how it has a certain appeal. In 1999, the value is 100. And therefore, we can see immediately the amount by which prices have increased or changed relative to the base period.